one of the people who has worked really, really hard to bring us together is Sami Abdullah, president of Free Thought Lebanon. Can we welcome Sami onto stage? Allah. <laughs> so, good morning everyone and welcome to Celebrating the Sun 2022. So more than 50 advocates of freedom of thought from over 30 countries have come together to celebrate free thought and dissent through talks, poetry, film, art and music. In addition to our esteemed speakers and performers, we are joined by a large number of supporters and activists from around the world. The demand on tickets to attend this conference has surpassed all our expectations and we were sold out in the early weeks of announcing the conference. Of course, you can still see some empty seats and this is on purpose. The aim was to keep some distancing between the people. So last week, uh, actually, this great eagerness to attend and celebrate dissent is a sign of how increasingly important our voice is becoming. Last week, Salman Rushdie, a titan of free speech, was cowardly assaulted by a religious fanatic in New York. The barbaric attack perfectly captures the dichotomy and contrast between us and the religious fascists who carry out such atrocities. We stand for freedom of thought while they stand for intellectual subjugation. We stand for ideas and words while they stand for daggers and guns. We stand for humor and satire while they stand for state-sponsored incitement to murder. We stand for robust rational discourse, while they stand for exaggerated sensitivities that mask medieval superstitions. <laughs> we are the future and they are the past. So this violent and narrow-minded worldview is not limited to a few extremist groups, but is also enshrined in law in many countries around the world where apostasy is still punishable by death. Think about that for a second. If you don't believe in somebody's imaginary friend, you will be put to death. Even when people believe in these enforced myths, they can still be abused, assaulted, imprisoned, and hurt if they express any non-conforming opinion. Millions of women continue to be forcefully veiled against their wishes, and millions more continue to be persecuted because of their sexual orientation and identity. Last year, women in Afghanistan lost their most basic right of education. Not long ago in the US, the Supreme Court ruled against a woman's right to bodily autonomy. The rise of these transgressions is very much linked to the rise of intolerant religious ideologies. Despite all the suffering that these ideologies are causing, Clerics continue to claim that attacking the religious beliefs does not fall under free speech and that all of us have a duty to respect their feelings. Yet, as Salman Rushdie reminds us, the moment you declare a set of ideas be immune from criticism, satire, derision or contempt, freedom of thought becomes impossible. Today we gather to once again uphold our right to dissent from religious dogma our right to criticize and ridicule, and our right to freedom of thought and freedom of expression. Our world today is becoming increasingly polarized. We see a rise on the right in the xenophobic, racist, and anti-refugee rhetoric, and we see a trend in the far left to blindly defend Islam in the name of countering Islamophobia. The space of free rational discourse is shrinking, and censorship is on the rise. Yet we see no contradiction in denouncing both racism and harmful religious dogma. We see no contradiction in both defending refugees at risk and opposing the dangerous teachings of Sharia law. Our gathering today is not just to express a different point of view. Experience has shown us that such conferences offer immensely rich opportunities for networking. Five years ago, I first met Maryam and other representatives of ex-Muslim organizations, and we decided to build an alliance then and we have since accomplished great things. We have launched Atheist Day, which continues to be celebrated on March 23rd of every year. We also launched Apostasy Day and worked together to save tens of atheists who are fleeing persecution. This week's conference is yet another fruit 
for this collaboration. So I've, I invite you all to take this opportunity to meet like-minded people and build communication bridges. There's indeed power in there's indeed power in numbers, and our voices and actions can be amplified if we work together and if we learn from each other. So finally, I would like to express my deep gratitude to all the volunteers, sponsors, and speakers who made this possible. It's a very long list of names. I will only name one person, which is Ayman Al Qaisi. Ayman, he's he was handling all the design related to the conference, all the slides, all the art and everything. He would have loved to come with us, but he couldn't make it. And uh, so organizing this conference has taken a lot of hard work, dedication, and resources, and it wouldn't have been possible without you. So thank you all for your time, and I wish you a fruitful conference. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sami. Um, a very, very moving speech.